Today, my brothers and sisters, we get to celebrate Mass as if we were in a monastery without candles. It's a great blessing. But I don't like to keep you in the dark. So I was looking at this first reading, and I thought it began rather oddly. It says, Thus says the Lord, I know their works and their thoughts, and I come to gather the nations of every language. They shall come and see my glory. And I said that first line, I know their works and their thoughts. Is it talking about the nations? Something didn't click right with me, so I flipped open the original source material. And it was an act of laziness on the part of the person who assembled the lectionary. That might be too harsh. Maybe he thought it would just be easier to put it together the way he did. But the sentence that precedes it is not actually, I know their works and their thoughts, and then it implies that, oh, he knows the works and the thoughts of all the nations who aren't of Israel, and they must be good. That's the implication. Here's what the line actually is. They who sanctify and purify themselves to go to the groves as followers of one who stands within it's a prostitution cult. They who eat swine's flesh, loathsome things, and mice shall all perish with their deeds and their thoughts, says the Lord. That's the actual line. Those who do not know me, those who seek out pleasure, before me, who honor me with their lips, who might eat and drink in my temple and claim to worship me, but then go off and hang out with the harlots and not to convert them, and those who do other abominable deeds which would pollute their soul, I know their thoughts and their deeds, and they shall not taste my banquet. Now, there are among the nations. And then it continues. Because, again, who is he actually talking about, that prophet? God speaks through him. And he's talking about, yes, those who have never known him who then go after the devil and his ilk. And there are plenty of pagans who do that, my brothers and sisters. Once more, we fall into this really easy mindset that we say, oh, you know, if a person doesn't know God through no fault of their own, and they try to honor their conscience, they go to heaven. And therefore, I don't need to be busy about the missionary work of telling them the truth of the gospel. My brothers and sisters, consider your own lives. I consider mine. It's super hard to be a good person even as a practicing Catholic. So dangerous and so ugly is the world, especially today. It can pour that cult of the grove right into your living room through your screens, and it's desperate to do so. You no longer have to go out to the grove. It can come right in. That's partly and so, so imagine what you might be if you were a pagan and your conscience hasn't been properly formed. I was having dinner with a family last night, a very simple lesson, but the first time the little girl learned it, she might have been five. Mother and the father said, if you don't finish your dinner, you can't have your dessert. Well, I don't want my dinner. I don't want my dinner. Okay, fine. Took the girl's dinner away. Dessert came out. Oh, can I have some? No. And the look on her face was stunned. My decisions have consequences. It was like the first time it had registered. What a beautiful lesson they taught their child by not giving her that dessert. You have made your choice. Here is the consequence. How beautiful it was to see. Imagine you did not have good parents. Imagine you did not have a church which tells you this is the path of life and this is the path of death. 
and you must choose which one you walk in. But that's what that one looks like, and it's broad and wide, and it's easy to go that way. And this one over here is narrow and hard, and you must deny yourself, but it makes you strong and makes you happy and leads you to eternal life. That is the plight of the pagans in ancient and modern times, my brothers and sisters. How hard it is to be good even when you have a father who punishes and disciplines you. And we have the best father. We have the heavenly father. He does not punish you beyond your means. He knows the limits of your strength. And he calls you to something better. He loves you too much to ignore your sins. To say, oh yeah, no, he's fine. He's going to grow up and first time he runs in a race, all his legs are going to go out of joint because I never taught him how to become strong. That's not a father, that's an oaf. And we used to laugh at them in sitcoms until it became commonplace. Again, I don't want you in the dark. With the best intentions, so they claim, they try to make you soft. The road to hell is paved with good intentions, and that road is very smooth and very easy. It takes effort to follow our Lord, and the first time you try it, you fall into thorns and thistles and you scream. Thorns and thistles, the fruit of Adam's fall. Cursed be the ground and it will bring forth thorns and thistles for you. And so, in our anger, we take the thorns and thistles as we arrive and we weave them into a crown and we place them upon our God's head and we say, see how you like it. This is pain, you know, and you gave it to me. I would prefer to be soft. And in a moment, the good Lord could turn us back to the dust from which he took us. But he shows the true power of strength is in restraint. And he is meek and humble of heart, and he bears it for our sake. And says, you will learn this lesson, and I will show you first how to do so. And then he gets up and he picks up his cross and he strives along the narrow, hard way of Calvary. And it's not far, but it seems an eternity if you're suffering from blood loss and a migraine headache and dealing with the fact that everyone you love hates you. And the hero God keeps going. Because God doesn't make junk. He calls out of the dust divinity. And says, here is my humanity. And I will be wed to it. And up the hill he goes. And what a beacon it is for those people who live in the black, in the darkest night, candles burn brightest. And our Lord isn't just a candle, he's a sun. And the pagans see, and they are either repulsed or attracted. And the danger is to those of us who are from the cradle that we are only lukewarm. Having grown up in the light, we make use of it but won't draw too close for fear of it. And that is the most offensive thing to God. That's why his tone changes and he gets very serious. Because this is for everyone. Why do so few accept it?
You know he's good. You know the light is good. Why won't you come to me? Why won't you let yourself be changed? But I call all, and so he does. And they come from east and west, out of the darkest parts of the world. Africa is a war zone, my brothers and sisters. They are drowning in vocations. How did that happen? Because it's the church that stands in the face of that monstrosity and says, I am not afraid. And all the young men look and they see that and they say, I want that. I want to be like that, pure of heart and true of purpose, and I will follow that. And there are so many, we are blessed to have them scattered throughout the world because the priests make Jesus Christ present. That is within their power. And the priest must strive, my brothers and sisters. I ask this of you a lot. Please pray for your priests because you got me from the same place you're sitting. <laughs> Please pray for us. If a priest only did half of what he was supposed to do, the people would think he was a saint and he would still go to hell. It's serious work, salvation. But we make it as easy as we possibly can. It's an easy choice. This or that. Death or life. Darkness or light. Jesus Christ or the world. So I preach him to you. I make him known to you. I say strive. Try hard. You say, what if it breaks me? And I tell you this, he will put you back together. What needs to be broken open isn't your body but your stony hearts, just like mine. And once more, he shows the way. A heart crowned with thorns, pierced with a lance, wide open to pour out grace. Open your hearts. It'll hurt. You will be radically different than you were the day before. But do not be afraid. Strive. Strive. There is so much good waiting for you on the other side that will never go away. And so much glory and honor for those pure of heart and purpose. God bless you this morning.